everybody today I'm just showing you a quick and easy project I've made this was inspired by I think it's Susie on creative cafe create creative cafe girl and she was inspired by a magazine that we cannot get in Australia uh, I'll put the name on the screen. I'm not sure what the name of the magazine is. I'll have to check on that. But it's a lovely magazine. I really wish we could get it here, but we can't. So we have to live through other people. And this is a simple variation on what she made. And from what I can gather is in the magazine, they must have used some wax on their images uh, to make it stick to the cereal bags. You know... The cereal bags that come inside your boxes of cereal. I think some people call them cereal linings. And I didn't use wax on mine. I used another product. I used, where is it? I use something called silicon adhesive sealant and this particular one is from Helmer. So this is actually one of my design projects for Helmer and I'll put a link in the description box below to my blog post for that. But I've used this, as you can see, on a number of different projects other than what it's, you know, generally used for. And it works really wonderful with plastics, metals, glass and things like that. It does have a long curing time but for this particular project that doesn't matter um, I put this together oh in about two hours it was so quick and easy um, and if you want to know exactly how I did that it is on the blog post but I'll just have a flick through of this um, right now so that's the front cover I've just used an image from a gardening book I've um, typed up some numbers and words and just cut those out and stuck those on. The back is that. It's a cereal bag, like I said, and enclosed inside the cereal bag is just a tea-stained piece of um, ledger paper, I guess it is. Okay, and I've done some stitching on this as well. And like I said, the image is not loose in there. It's actually stuck to the cereal, cereal bag. If you look on the back, you can... Uh, I, I don't know. Um, inside, you'll be able to notice that the paper is quite loose in there. But that particular one is stuck to the paper, so you get a nice, crisp, clear image. And so this is the inside. I've recycled a bag there. And so inside that I've just popped a piece of paper so that it wasn't entirely see-through. And then I've just put a little, a few things of flowers, a bit of ephemera, so that I can put them in the bag, if in the book if I want. That's just put in there. That's just some um, book paper stuck to a bit of card stock. Um that I use for lots of different things. I use it for sending things to people, but I also cut it up and make tags and things like that. So that's just, I just included it on the stitching when I stitched the cover together. Bit of stitching there. And I love the feel of this. I've used a slightly heavier weight paper than um, typical photocopy paper. I think photocopy paper is about 80 GSM or something and I think this is about 100 and it's really nice and it does tea stain up very nicely. Just some ephemera pieces and I pretty much just used what I had in my little dish over here and that's why it didn't take long at all to decorate this and it is simply decorated because I plan on using this um, for the garden we're making out the back. I want to write things down. So I'll just have a quick, I've got a bit of, um, what is that called, uh, stick and peel or something like that with your book papers. Really easy to do, just put a bit of glue down, put a bit of book paper down, let it dry for a couple of seconds and rip it off gently, of course. Uh, you do get the writing backwards sometimes, but that's okay. And just some papers, bits that were laying around like that. That's that um, Asian paper I found a while ago. I don't know what kind it is, but it's really nice. Some graph paper. A little tag in there with some seam binding. 
another image, just some paper to write on. Simple decorations. Another simple one, a couple of punchettes there. And just some um, off cuts from the actual pages because I didn't want the pages all the same size. So what I've done here is I've put some of the off cuts from the pages that I've used in the book and these can be used like this to stick on and just write little notes because sometimes you want something to catch your eye. So if you put it on something different, it kind of pops out. So um, that's what they're there for, just a few different ones so that I can use it throughout the book. A bit of cheesecloth. A butterfly and then it goes back the other way and I think it's around 60 pages in all very nice and flat it's only one signature and it is it's just um, it's about eight and a half inches by uh, just short of six inches, about five and three quarter inches. Just some more papers there to use and little tuck spot, and button, and paper clip with some seam binding and tool on the top there. And that's just tied there with a bit of glue underneath it to hold it in place. Some lace, just a cut out. And these are actually pencil marks. I drew them on myself because. I kind of thought that looked a bit odd by itself on the page so I put these pencil marks on and as you can see if I want them a bit lighter I can make them lighter they don't have to stay dark so that's an easy idea just to add a bit of interest to a, a page more collaging just some more stick-ons a little bit of paper there off cut to right on and that's the last page and that's the inside cover and just as an afterthought I thought I'd slit that I just got my scissors carefully and went up like that um, just for some extra paper and I did put some washi tape on this um, this is using the the same sort of concept as I used for my little ephemera holders and somebody suggested that I put washi tape over the the cut to make it strong so I did that but these particular bags they are so strong like they might be different in different countries but oh well that was that was a bad example there see how look I'm really you can see by the pressure on my hand they're really hard to cut. I don't know why that one cuts so easily. It must have been a weak spot. But generally speaking, they're very hard to rip. So I wasn't overly concerned with this, you know, it holding its strength. But I do like the look of the washi tape. So, and I just put my name in there. And so that is the book. But as you can see, uh, I'll see if I can... You see, it moves a bit because it's not glued down, whereas you don't get that effect at all on the front cover because of the silicon. And the silicon, it, it sticks really well. I'm not saying it will, if you didn't try and pull it up, that it wouldn't come up because, you know, until it's completely cured, that may still happen. But once it's in here anyway, you can't pull it up. So, you know, it's just, it works really, really good. Um, so that's the first one I made. So I just want to show you how I did it. Although I've done a blog post on it, sometimes it's easier to see somebody actually doing it rather than through photo photography which can be a bit hard to get the right pictures sometimes so I have a piece of paper here it's just like an A4 piece of paper folded in half and I think A4 is like um, is it letter size or something as well um, so it's basically this one is about eight inches 
by 11 and a half inches so it's a little bit narrower than A4 but that's fine that's what I'm using and I have just decorated where the front cover will be so it will fold like that I've just got an image out of a book some decorative paper some book paper a little bit of washi tape I've printed out the number six and the word journal and then I open it up like that on the other side I've just put a little bit of washi tape just to give a bit of interest then I get my cereal bag now my cereal bag when it's folded like that is um, eight and three quarter or actually nine inches and it's about probably 13 inches that's the size of my cereal bag they come in different sizes the easiest way I find once you've washed them because this is pre-used of course um, gently because they're joined together they're very easy to pull apart I pull it up the side seam like that and across the top that's I found after doing a few that's probably the easiest way to open them without ruining them too much they are a very strong plastic though you know they just don't they don't rip easily Okay, so now that that is done, I fold it like that. So that was the top, that was the bottom, something like that. And the, where it was joined down the um, centre seam there, I'm just putting those ends together like that. And this particular kind of bag has, like, it has some numbers printed on it. So I'm just going to use that as a decorative aspect for my journal so now that I've folded it over like that lift it up and you can put this inside but I'm just going to make sure that I firmly crease this side here so I can line it up fairly straight we do trim it as well so that's like that I'm going to, because I will be trimming it up a little bit, I'm going to, um, it's it's probably a bit more than a quarter of an inch, I think. Oh, it's about a quarter of an inch, just under a centimetre from that crease line there. And I'm just positioning it in the centre like that. Now, I glued all these on with a PVA craft glue from Helma. And this is the silicon adhesive sealant. It's almost finished this tube. I might actually get another one because, oh no, there's still a bit in here I can use. Um, might as well use every last drop of it. And all you do is put some of this on, a few blobs, Let's see how much I can get out of this. There should be just enough by the look of it. You don't need it too thick. Okay, that should work. Let's hope. I have a little spatula here. And all you do is spread it over the picture section. You don't need to be spreading it over anything else. Because that's the part you want to be able to see through the plastic properly. You don't want it to look like it's floating within the cover. So down that decorative paper there. The more you move it, it gets a bit softer and it's easier to spread around. And then you might actually find that it's a bit thick. So you kind of scrape it around and move it around to other parts. So you can see it on there, but I can put it up somewhere where it didn't get as much. Mm -hmm. And don't worry too much about any if it looks a bit stripy because once we put it folded over we can fix all that so I think that looks about right 
looks like it's fairly evenly covered. Move that over. Position it so that the seam is fairly straight up there and then fold it over like that. You can I'll just see if I can pull it down a little bit on this side, although it's not too bad. There. Is that right? Mm. Okay, that's a bit better. Okay, and then you can get your bone folder and just smooth it out. And this is why you don't want it too lumpy and bumpy on the inside. You want it to have a nice stick. And that's what you do. And that will hold it there like it will take a couple of days to cure properly, but that doesn't stop you from continuing on with this. And then all I do is starting in the center there, I sew around the paper all the way around where well, you can sort of sew that way, that way, and then that way, that way, and down up to you. And then once I've sewn that, I can I can leave it a little while perhaps and so it doesn't clog up my sewing machine and then you can come back and sew over the top around the picture and things like that if you want to to make it more decorative. So I was just having a little play around and this is kind of more in this in the the way that um, Creative Cafe Girl did hers. Um, Whereas before I had a big sheet of paper behind everything. This is like floating um, clusters. So all I have is a bit of book paper, the inside cover of another book, some diagrams and a little bit of, there's a bit of lace here and this is a little bit of crochet trim and I think I will put that on the outside because it's quite thick. So trying to keep it fairly um, non-dimensional. And then these are the bits that were ripped off this inside cover piece. And I thought I would put a bit of that down the center just to add a little bit of stability to the spine. So what I'm going to do is just glue and stitch all these little collage pieces together. Uh, and then I will, I think I need to be opening a new pack of my silicon glue now and I will put silicon and just see how that turns out and what it looks like. Don't you just love opening new glues? <laughs> Look at that. Ah, non-squeezed yet. Lovely. Okay, so on this I'm going to do the back cover as well. I just need to pierce the top of that. Okay, and get a spatula. So I might do the back cover first.
How's that? That looks about right, doesn't it? I think. Now I'm going to put my finger where that crease is and hold it and then smooth it over the top. And I think I'll get a wet one to do that. Oh, you could use a dry rag. I've just got a bit of stickiness on my fingers and a bit there, so I wanted to get that off. Because it's plastic, we can dry this. So we'll just do that. And that's a bit like ripped from when this particular bag was opened, but that's okay because it adds to that rusticy kind of shabby look which I like anyway and when I've put a few stitches in that it will hold it down I don't I don't know how strong this will be because it's like a floating they're floating covers aren't they we'll just have to find out Okay, and this little piece here I will stitch on to the front like that. I'll just get a towel to clean and wipe that down. And I'm going to let that sit and cure for a little bit. I may need a little bit more under there. Um, before I stitch it because I don't want it clogging up my sewing machine in any way. And then I'll be back. Okay, so I've done all that and stitched it on. The spine actually didn't end up being right in the middle. It's it's actually positioned on the back, but that's okay. That's the front. I've stitched that on. I think I got it a little bit crooked, but I'm not too concerned. These are the threads. My sewing machine ran out of the green thread, but because that was on top of a darker thread, it actually picked up a darker thread as it, and, and just kept going. So I've left that because I quite like the look of that. And then I've just done a little bit of sewing over the top. Went around there like that. And inside you can see the different thread there. Um, but that's okay. It's a nature kind of one, this one anyway. These are the threads or some of them. I thought what I might do is use some of these threads and kind of made it make a little nesty kind of thing on the front and perhaps so a couple of beads in there as well and that might take away a little bit from that crookedness of that <laughs> that there so if I put that there and sew a couple of pearls on it maybe have something dropping down that should be all right. I might actually get the darker looking thread on top. That help it to go on. And with that, I can actually glue that on. Can I glue that? I'm just trying to think the best way to do this because we all know normal glues don't stick to this plastic. So I may have to, oh, I know what I'll do. Throwing all my bits of scraps away. Uh, a bit of scrap paper. Maybe I'll just rip a bit off here and use that behind it. Okay, a little bit of. Uh, this is actually tacky glue in here, Helmar tacky glue. I just like to have it in a smaller bottle. I'm just going to strengthen it a little bit. Like that, make it just a little bit thicker. Now. Okay, so now I've got a base that I can put it on and attach it to that. 
So that's what... Where did it go? Oh, there. <laughs> okay, so... Um, is tacky glue going to hold that? I might... Uh, it should do, but it's going to take a while to... Oh! Dropping things. My hands are a bit slippery from the, um, the silicon glue, so... I'll use some of the quick dry adhesive. This dries nice and quick, so I'll just put a bit of this on there. Maybe I'll put it that way. Okay. And then a bit on this side. pop that like that and that way it's half on the doily and half not but that half should be enough to keep it there I want to give it a nesty kind of look don't we there we go like that and I'll put a couple of beads in there I can sew those on though once that glue is dry. Uh, I kind of want natural. Oh, I love these beads, but I don't know if they look like eggs. They might not look really very much like eggs in there. No, not really. <laughs> I love those little beads. Um, oh, I might have. I've got. Fingers are so slippery. Uh, what you got here? That one. That one you should be able to. And Might be a bit big because it's a you know you, you don't want to stop your ability to write or anything so maybe no I don't want to the same oh I know what I will do I'll put a little rhinestone in there as well kind of like that that will look pretty won't it okay and then. That will be that cover. So it'll be interesting to see how this one turns out because, of course, these covers that I've... Oops, that's just a piece of paper. I've gone ahead and done. They have the paper all the way across, like that. Uh, but these are floating inside, so it'll be interesting. Okay. So that's sewn on. I've stitched the little pearls and the rhinestone on that. Um, I'm not sure how these floating ones are going to go. See how that curls? Whereas the other ones, because they've got the paper in them, they don't curl. Like they curl a little tiny bit, but not enough to you know not like this so that's going to curl a lot by the look of it I think the only way you could probably stop that is to stitch something like maybe you know but that might ruin the whole effect of it so what I've done now is I've just put some papers uh, pictures I might like because that's more of a wildlife one and then just different sizes of papers and things like that they're not stitched or anything they're just all blank I did put a flip to see if I in there like that 
um, probably put a blank piece of paper there to write on or something or maybe even another picture there that might be nice another picture there but that's all I've done so that's that and I've got quite a lot to be decorating like there's that wildlife one but I've got number two and like the same thing I've only just slipped all the papers in there they're not decorated at all so that's number two that's the inside and they're blank on the back that's number three same sort of thing just papers inside number four and that's the inside they do feel good I must admit they do feel good um, number five, that's the inside, and number six, and that's the inside of that, and I've just got washi tape on those pages, and that's the one that I've, um, that's the, the one I completed, or, you know, can still be added to can still be added to I've still got to put something on the bulb pin there I'm not quite sure what yet so I'll show all these in another video it's going to take some time I intend to listen to some audio books I think while I'm playing in those and that should be nice nice get my, get get our minds off other things I think keep things nice and happy and you know as carefree as we possibly can keep ourselves happy there we go so thank you for joining me today take care everybody bye